In 1821, Nat Turner ran away from his overseer. After 30 days, he returned because of a vision in which the spirit had told him to return to the service of his master. The next year, following the death of his master, Samuel Turner, Nat was sold to Thomas Moore. Three years later, Nat Turner had another vision. That second vision and the rest of the story coming up. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the case may be. This is KRT, Critical Race Theory. It's not the one they teach in law school, but the one banned in public schools. In this episode, we cover Nat Turner's Slave Rebellion. Nat Turner was born on October 2nd, 1800 in Southampton County, Virginia. While still a young child, Nat was overheard describing events that happened before he was born. This, along with his keen intelligence and other signs, marked him in the eyes of his people as a prophet intended for some great purpose. He was a deeply religious man, therefore he studiously avoided mixing in society and wrapped himself in mystery, devoting time to fasting and praying. During that second vision, he saw lights in the sky and prayed to find out what they meant. Then, while working in the field, he discovered drops of blood on the corn as though it were dew from heaven. He told what he had seen to many in the neighborhood, both black and white. He also found hieroglyphic characters and numbers on the leaves in the woods with the forms of men in different attitudes, portrayed in blood and representing the figures he had seen before the heavens. By the spring of 1828, Turner was convinced that he was ordained for some great purpose in the hands of the Almighty. He heard a loud noise in the heavens while working in Moore's Field on May 12th. He said, and the spirit instantly appeared to me and said, the serpent was loosened and Christ had laid down the yoke he had borne for the sins of men and that I should take it on and fight against the serpent for the time was fast approaching when the first should be last and the last should be first. Historian and theologian Joseph Dreis later wrote, quote, in connecting this vision to the motivation for his rebellion, Turner makes it clear that he sees himself as participating in the confrontation between God's kingdom and the anti-kingdom that characterized his social historical context. At the beginning of the year 1830, Turner was moved to the home of Joseph Travis, the new husband of Thomas More's widow. His official owner was a young child by the name of Putnam Moore. Turner described Travis as a kind master. He had no problems with him. Then in February 1831, there was an eclipse of the sun. Turner took this to be the sign he had been promised and told his plan to four men he trusted the most. They were Henry, Hark, Nelson, and Sam. No last name. Gotta keep it quiet. They decided to hold the insurrection on the 4th of July and began planning a strategy. But that didn't happen because Turner got sick. On August 13th, there was an atmospheric disturbance in which the sun appeared bluish green. This was the final sign, and a week later on August 21st, Turner and six of his men met in the woods to eat dinner and make their plans. At two o'clock that morning, they set out to the Travis household where they killed the entire family as they lay sleeping. They continued on from house to house, killing all of the white people they encountered. Turner's force eventually consisted of more than 40 slaves, most on horseback. By about midday on August 22nd, Turner decided to march toward Jerusalem. That was the closest town. By then, word of the rebellion had spread to the whites. The rebels scattered after being confronted by a group of militia and Turner's force became disorganized. After spending the night near some slave cabins, Turner and his men attempted to attack another house, but were repulsed. Several of the rebels were captured. The remaining force then met the state and federal troops in a final skirmish in which one slave was killed, but many escaped 
including Turner. In the end, the rebels had stabbed, shot, and clubbed at least 55 white people to death. Nat Turner hid in several different places near the Travis farm, but on October 30th was discovered and captured. His confession was dictated to physician Thomas R. Gray, taken while he was imprisoned in the county jail. On November 5th, Nat Turner was tried in the Southampton County Court and hanged. Nat Turner's rebellion put an end to the white Southern myth that slaves were either contented with their lot or too servile to mount an armed revolt. For many years in black churches throughout the country, the name Jerusalem referred not only to the Bible, but also covertly to the place where the rebel slave had met his death. This has been Critical Race Theory, Episode 6. Thanks for checking in. Please like and subscribe and share this video with your friends and family. We'll see you next time.